Well, fortunately, I don't have to shoulder it alone, but we, we all read the book. In this case, we instantly felt like it was a, you know, a really fresh, exciting movie opportunity for, for us to work on and for audiences to see. Uh, David Kep, um, the uh, screenwriter, he co-wrote Angels and Demons. I've worked with David before. He, he came in and had a, uh, an immediate point of view about how to approach it, but that began a series of meetings, uh, which some of them included Dan Brown. Uh, and the executives at Sony, because you know, if you did a literal adaptation of a Dan Brown novel, he admits it would be five or six hours long. And so you've got to make some choices. We also felt that the ending uh, was fantastic for his novel, made a lot of sense, and it was thematically intriguing, but, uh, but not the kind of cinematic climax that a movie audience expects you know, from, their, from a thriller that they've just you know, gone to see. So, you know, there, 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 there was some combining of characters and some reshaping of things, but always trying to build on those foundations of, that Dan Brown gives us that are so original, so smart, and so entertaining. Well, casting is always so important, and in, in the case of this, of this adaptation, I decided not to limit myself to the descriptions of the book. I, I, I wanted to deliver the spirit uh, of those characters and, um, their, and their personalities to a large extent, but I didn't worry about nationality. I wanted as interesting an international cast as I could put together, and, uh, but I wanted fascinating, charismatic figures in all of these roles. Uh, and, um, and I was able to go out and find them because the, you know, the, the, the characters are interesting, the books are famous, uh, and David Kep's screenplay was very attractive. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. It's something that I look forward to. I have no anxiety about. The opposite. You know, I, I know that um, he's also a great collaborator. And, uh, um, and he's, he's, he's more than an actor who's going to come and, 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 and create a remarkable performance for you. You know, he's going he's to help you with the movie. Um, but only when you ask. You know, he's very polite about it. But he's, a, he's an excellent producer, writer, and director. And, 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 and I, uh, you know, I'm constantly picking his brain. Well, you know, the, the, the fun begins with the location scout, where you're, you're going and you're imagining all of the possibilities and you're having great lunches and meals and discussing the creative options at your disposal and the themes of the story and the history of the locations. And then you come to the, car, the hard, cold facts that, you know, you're going to have about three hours to shoot a scene that you'd normally shoot in a day because that's all that the mayor's office can possibly give you because so many tourists want to be there. That's why Dan Brown chose the location, because they're, the, they're among the most popular uh, you know, on the planet. Uh, so it, it's, uh, it, but it makes for a tremendous you know, creative journey and a, and a great life experience, and so it's all worth the hassle. Well, technology is changing everything, and Dan Brown is nothing if not cutting edge about um, you know, society, where it's going, and this kind of interesting tension between the past and the future. You know? And he always puts his stories right on that intersection point. Um, this one probably more than any of them, because when you're dealing with overpopulation, you know, that's not theology, that's not a theory, that's not ancient history, that's, that's, that's of the moment, and we know it's gonna impact our immediate future and it's a bona fide controversy. We, you know, we don't know how to solve it.